I'm so glad you all made the time to come together and be here this evening. The fact that you're here means you already know a lot about MIT. You know that MIT has brilliant students and gives them great opportunities. You know that MIT has amazing faculty who advance knowledge. But you know, if you stopped there in just talking about teaching and research, it's a little disappointing. It sounds like a lot of other leading universities in the US and around the world. MIT is a special place, you know that. It's a distinctive place. It's a mission-driven place with a specific sense of itself and its purpose. So while students matter and faculty matter, I hope you'll agree with me that MIT relies on brilliant, creative, driven students and on innovative faculty who are impatient to have important impact in the world in order to fulfill what's always been MIT's mission, and that is to invent the future, invent a positive future, ensure a better world. MIT is a tough place. People at MIT ask themselves, if I don't do it and the world needs it, then who will? To that point, the journalist Thomas Friedman, some of you recognize that name, spent a couple days at MIT a couple of years ago spending time with our students. And one of the things that the MIT students told him during that visit not only stayed with him, but became the title of the piece he wrote about his time at MIT. They said, Mr. Friedman, we are the people the world's been waiting for. Now more than ever, the world needs MIT people, its students, its faculty, its alumni and friends, honestly, to be the people that the world has been waiting for. If John Goodenough, who was a researcher at MIT's Lincoln Lab from 1952 to 1976 before moving to Oxford, hadn't developed at MIT the revolutionary lithium ion battery that powers your mobile devices and electric vehicles, who would have done it? When would it have happened? John, as you may know, received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry this year. If MIT economics professors, Abhijit Banerjee and Esther DeFlo, hadn't developed the new economics of poverty alleviation, showing which poverty alleviation programs work and which ones don't, and why, who would have done that and when? And again, as many of you know, Abhijit and Esther received the Nobel Prize in Economic Sciences this year. All across MIT, people are changing the world through ideas that are made to matter. Consider human health, MIT's advances in genomics, in new cancer therapeutics, and in new ways that are innovative in, in um, delivering health systems. MIT is improving human health. In architecture, music composition, visual arts, MIT is bringing to the world brilliant design and breathtaking artistic works. In machine learning and artificial intelligence, through MIT's new Stephen A. Schwartzman College of Computing, we're not only shaping the future of AI and computing and not only taking a responsibility for technological leadership, but also for an ethical consciousness that's so very much needed in making sure that these new technologies serve not only profit, but serve the common good. And in tonight's theme itself, MIT's activity in addressing climate change, in solving environmental challenges, and in uh, creating a sustainable planet is creating a better world. So in May of 2016, when it came time to name this audacious campaign for MIT, it seemed hopeful but also appropriate that we would call it the Campaign for a Better World. It was an audacious campaign in its goal. Six billion dollars is a lot of money for anyone, including for an institution the size of MIT. And with $5.2 billion raised so far to support bringing the right people to MIT and empowering them to do the work 
that makes you all proud? It required the community to come together as it never had before. This campaign has seen 100,000 gifts made to MIT. We're a numbers place, so those are some of the numbers, and I'm grateful to all of you for supporting. But the numbers only tell part of the story. There's also the narrative, because as people have been giving in this campaign, they've said back to us what we hope to hear, and that is that they see a gift to MIT as a gift to the world. I want to say thanks for the support, but I also want to say thank you for seeing MIT that way and for challenging us to fulfill the hopes and the expectations that you have of the Institute. <clears throat> now, I want to talk about three challenges briefly in university education, and then we'll get to the um, heart of tonight's topic. The first of those challenges relates to the campaign itself. You know about government funding for research, especially for basic research. You know what's been happening in terms of dramatic declines. What that means over the last 10 years and probably over the next 10 years is the need to rely more heavily than ever <clears throat> on alumni and friends and supporters. And again, in this campaign, you've let us do that. I want to say thank you especially for seeing us through this more challenging time. There's a second challenge in higher education that you may have read about in the headlines, and that is people being concerned about integrity of admissions processes at leading universities. Now, this is a setting in which MIT, unsurprisingly, hasn't been the focus of negative news. But nonetheless, MIT's perspectives on admissions need to be part of the conversation and part of the contribution to better processes, more reliable processes, with integrity for admissions, and also processes that lead to greater access to higher education for people around the country and around the world. And there's a third challenge for universities that I want to touch on. There have been questions about the kind of people that universities rely on as donors. MIT has been in the spotlight with some of, that, with some of that, those headlines, and not in a positive way. In the last few months, some in our community have felt sadness and frustration and anger about gifts that should not have been accepted. MIT is engaged in a re-examination of the kinds of gifts it will accept, the people from whom it will accept gifts. It's a discussion that is important about process, but it's also a discussion that's important about culture. I hope that you see MIT as a place that has a history of taking principle, turning it into analysis, and then into effective action. And I hope with me that you feel confident that MIT's examinations here will produce outcomes that are better for MIT and also better for the other universities who are looking to MIT for better standards in working with donors. Now that topic of a place that turns principles into effective action it's probably a pretty effective way to lead us into tonight's topic. You know the topic for this evening, <clears throat> investing in a sustainable planet. You're going to hear from three great scholars at MIT, and you'll have the opportunity to interact with them through the um, um, Questions Anywhere app. It's something like that. There it is. <laughs> That's not exactly the title, but here's the URL. Use your mobile device, submit questions, and um, allow us to have a great conversation. As the evening unfolds and you get to hear from some of these folks, I hope that you'll keep three things in mind. First, if this evening does move you to support MIT further, please and thank you. Second, if you know people in your community, in your network, who should know more about MIT and know more about what's happening at MIT, please use what you see tonight to tell them. Because the point of this campaign is not only financial support, it is also engagement, impact, and visibility. Thank you for that also. Third, if tonight moves you and your family, perhaps, to think about your own personal decisions, I think that would be great also. So without further ado, you're going to hear from Jason Jay. 
Jason is a senior lecturer at the MIT Sloan School of Management and directs the MIT um, Sustainability Initiative. You'll also hear from Alpha Jacob Arsano. Um, Alpha is a PhD candidate in architecture and building technology. Um, Alpha is also a researcher at the MIT Sustainable Design Lab. And first, you'll hear from MIT's Vice President for Research and E.A. Griswold Professor of Geophysics, Maria Zuber. Would you please give a warm welcome to Maria Zuber?